In this superhuman society, 80% of the population has some special ability called a quirk. I was born without a power, but this is the story of how I became the world's greatest hero! Hey guys, Nerd King 101 here. And today we're going to be reviewing My Hero Academia 2 Heroes. I just saw the movie yesterday, and I have a lot to say on it. I'm just going to open this video by being flat out with you. I think this movie is fantastic. Especially compared to other movies like it. Because most of the time, these Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, Dragon Ball are normally lacking in some regard. If you look at some of the older Dragon Ball and Naruto movies especially, there are some places in them where, yeah, the animation is better than the show, but it's certainly not movie animation. Like, it's not animation that you would see in a cinema. This movie, throughout the entire movie, looks really good. It looks like something you would be watching in a cinema. There are a couple parts early in the movie that I think look a little bit like the show. I just look a little bit like the standard animation. But overall, the entire thing is fantastic. A lot of these long-running shonen anime movies, specifically shows like Dragon Ball and One Piece, also have these like weird implements of CGI throughout the movie where they implement CGI and it doesn't look good and it's really jarring, or there are certain cuts of animation that don't look good. There is none of that in this movie. There will never be a time while watching this movie when you're going to think it looks bad. I will also say that the animation at the end of the movie for the final fight with a double Detroit smack, which we are going to talk about later when I briefly talk about the story, is fantastic. It's some of the best animation, you know what? It's the best animation this show has ever had, which is saying something. It also makes it very clear why some of the animation for Season 3 overall is a little lackluster compared to Season 2. Because it's clear that all the big talent that they normally put onto the show was working on this movie. Because this movie is that awesome. This movie looks great, but this movie also feels, in terms of its story, like an authentic Horikoshi story. A lot of these movies, like the Naruto, Bleach, the One Piece, Dragon Ball movies, don't feel important and they feel kind of different. But you can never really place it unless you know about the behind the scenes stuff going on. But you always know something feels off about this. This feels different. Even if you like it, you know there's, there's something inherently different about this film compared to the rest of the series. And this doesn't feel like that. It honestly feels like you're watching a couple episodes of the anime all at once. Like a couple canon episodes of the anime just playing out in one big thing in a theater. That's what it feels like. You know, it feels like Horikoshi wrote it, which I do think he helped write. I do think he worked on the movie a little bit, but I'm not sure about his involvement. The only thing I can really compare it to is the way movies like Naruto the Last and Naruto Boruto the Movie feel and movies like One Piece film Z, Strong World, and film Gold feel. They have that feel of the original author, the writing style, and character style, and characterization. Their style is just all over the movie. Horikoshi's style is all over this. A ton of side characters get to shine in this movie. Not all the characters get to do something in this movie, but they all at least get mentioned what they're doing. We get to see glimpses of what they're all doing and catch up with them very briefly. But there are only a couple that actually have a main role in the story. The other students from UA that get a lot of focus in this movie are Uraraka, Bakugo, Hiroshima, Jiro, Nyanyurozu, Mineta, Torodoki, and Ida. I think the thing that's most incredible to me though is that all of these characters get to do something. I really enjoyed Bakugo and Toradoki's fight with the lackeys. I think there was some fantastic animation in there. I really liked the, the scene when Bakugo threw his hand down and he fired an explosion, shooting himself out of the way of an attack. The animation was unlike anything we've ever seen before in the show. It was almost like something out of Dragon Ball Z. It was just so cool. This movie also has just great in general character moments. There's a specific Uraraka moment that I really like. Look at the moment when she appears right behind Deku and Melissa as they're hanging out and she's like, what is going on? And she gets super defensive and jealous over Deku hanging out with Melissa. It was just a really funny moment that worked really well for the character of Uraraka and Deku. Especially because Deku like felt bad about it, which I think was really cool. But I mean, my entire theater just started laughing. It was a hilarious moment. 
it's also worth noting that I have not been paying too much attention to the trailer for this movie. I've seen a little bit of it, but I had not seen the short sneak peek thing of the part with Young All Might where he's fighting the villains in America. I had seen that one shot of the plus ultra jersey, but I had forgotten about it, and I was like super hyped up while watching it. You know, I had no idea we were going to get that much Young All Might, and I loved it. My favorite shot, as I said earlier, the shot of his plus ultra like jersey jacket thing, where it's plus ultra, and he's like, I'm an exchange student from Japan. And he goes in and he starts beating him up. I love seeing All Might in full power, how awesome he was. Like when he like flicks his hand and he like blew the missile away, but by like going, it was so cool. I especially loved the part of him on the building, smiling. I also loved the parts of him laughing. I saw it in Japanese and I think the voice actor just nailed the laughter of a young All Might. That was fantastic. We've never really gotten to see All Might a as a young hero, being a young hero. And I, I would honestly watch an entire movie just about young All Might fighting random weak villains in America with David. David Shield and Melissa Shield were actually really good characters. I was surprised at how well written they were. Normally these anime Shonen movies just throw the characters in there and nothing really happens. Normally they actually suck. Like that kid in the circus in the one Naruto movie. It's like who cares? It's like who really cares? And even in situations like Naruto the last. I'm still like who cares about this conflict? Like Naruto not the I'm like who cares? It's one of the only ones in the movie where in the confines of the movie they made me care. Like, Naruto the Last did not make you care about Naruto and not the relationship. The only reason you would care would be prior investment. This movie introduces two characters and makes you care about them. And it's fantastic. The only thing I didn't like, and it's gonna be one of my gripes with the movie, is I did not like the David Shield plot twist. The plot twist that he was kind of evil. Somehow I just knew. Probably the thing when they focused on his mouth and he was frowning in the very beginning and he was like, I need to talk to All Might alone. I knew, I was like, oh my god, they're gonna make him the villain. And then I thought, no. Because I thought Hirawaka was a better, smarter show than that. And to do something that obvious. And then they did it, and I was surprised in the kind of... Uh, I was surprised in the sense that I was like, really? They're doing that? Okay? I was disappointed. Like, I wasn't surprised, like, oh my god, that blew me away. I'm like, oh, I'm surprised they went with something that cliche and obvious because... Hirowaka is normally better than that, so that bothered me. I thought Melissa was great. I really like her. I think she's an interesting character. I also really like how they made her quirkless. I think making Melissa quirkless, one, allowed the audience to connect with her immediately. We already had that connection to Deku from the beginning of the series. And it allowed Deku in-universe to connect to her. It gives him a reason to be as close to her as he is and to care about her as much as he does because he was originally quirkless and you can see a point where I'm like is he gonna tell her and she's also really smart she's not one of those scientist characters just introduced like she's a smart scientist girl that's also really stupid and can't figure anything out like she figured out that Deku basically had the same power as All Might just by seeing him fight once what most of the classmates still have not figured out after knowing him for months. She figured out in a few minutes, and it's fantastic. I love Deku's like, oh, she figured it out. Damn it, this is bad. No, that was great. I like that. I really enjoyed that. I would have liked to see more music, like more uh, cinema, theater, music. Normally in these movies, sometimes you get like a special movie soundtrack. I obviously don't mind them playing themes, like all my theme songs, and you stay wrong. I liked that, but the time for those two things, we could have done with some new music. But I did really, when all my theme songs played, and when uh, you stay wrong played, the whole movie, I was like, they didn't play it for all of season three. And I could only think of one reason for why they wouldn't play it during uh, Deku vs. Muscular. Besides for the fact that maybe it wouldn't fit the theme or its emotional tone. I was like, maybe. I was like, maybe they were saving it because the movie was coming out soon in Japan. And they were. 
and they played You Stay Run during the final battle, and it was awesome. Like, I love You Stay Run. Yeah. I love You Stay Run. It's a great track. I'm very happy with it. And now, I honestly just want to move on and talk about the final battle of the movie. Before we do that, I do want to quickly talk about the villain. Because as I'm sitting down to record this part of the video, I'm realizing that I don't even remember the villain's name. I remember who he was working for, I remember how it tied into the plot, I remember all the details, but overall, I don't remember his name because I don't really think he was that important. He was really cool. But then again, a villain, there needs to be more than just a villain being cool. I liked his power to control metal. I especially liked how they used the quirk amplifier as a plot device for why David Shield did what he did. And the villain was like, no, shot David Shield, took it, and then used it on himself, and then they destroyed it. They're obviously like, well, we can't have a device that lets All Might go back to his prime just lying around. See, that literally defeats the entire purpose of the show's main character. So I liked that they did that. I liked how they destroyed the machine, but how they did use it smartly. They used it in a way that presented a logical reason that this villain, who is no longer a threat later on in any way, shape, or form, was able to be a threat to All Might and Deku at the same. Joy to the fact that they had it so all for one had set it up. I think that makes sense. I really like how All for One is just so evil and so... He's just such a jerk. He's just a bad person. He hates All Might so much. And he was just like, If I can just mess up your high school buddy's life, I'm satisfied that I know it will piss you off. And I know it will make you lose your smile for a while. And that is... That, just, that brings me great joy. Which I love. Like, he just like, just make All Might lose his smile for a bit, make him unhappy, and we're good, I'll help you out, bro. So I liked that, but I honestly feel that the villain on his own just wasn't interesting. I do think his, how epic it was, he did. His epicness and his connection to All For One kind of negates that, but it doesn't change the fact that I don't think he was a very well put together villain. I don't think he had very good motivations. I think he was a little too evil. Like, he's shooting people, he's just evil. He's like, I want you to be amplifier to murder all might and do all these evil things. Like, he didn't have any concrete motivation, which I didn't like. But also, as I said, I think the stuff with All For One and all that kind of negated it and how cool he was. He was so cool, and he tied in just the main zone in such an interesting way, that I was able to let it fly. He was a little bit of a letdown on its own. Now, before we talk about the fight, I have one last thing I've been saving until now. Full Gauntlet. I'm iffy on Full Gauntlet. Did I like it? And I also don't like it. I like what it allowed the movie to do with Deku. I liked all the things we got to see Deku do, I liked seeing Deku go all out, I liked to see him using his full power in his punches, but what I did not like was how much of a plot device it was, it was really ham-fisted and just thrown in there, just so Deku could use his full power and not break his arm, he could use 100% and fight with All Might at the end of the movie, which I didn't like, but it also gave us the ending. Which is, I think, is the, is the best fight in the show. The final fight of this movie, that final sequence, is fantastic, and we're gonna talk about it. I mean, I don't think there's much else to say besides it was great. I can't really go too deep into it because I can't rewatch it frame by frame. I'm probably gonna do a video on it in a couple months when the movie drops, then I can, like, get the footage for it and actually go through it, shot by shot, and break down everything I love about this movie, or at least that final fight, I'll probably just do why so so, like, well, All Might and Deku versus Villain is fantastic, or why the final fight of two heroes is fantastic, or something like that. I'm gonna do something like that, but I can't do that now, so I'm just gonna talk about a couple key moments that I liked, which are really two. There are two moments. The entire fight looked good, but the two moments I loved the most was first, the one when All Might and Deku are running. And All Might and Deku are running the exact same way, but Deku just slightly behind All Might. And they're running together, and you see like the blur, the, the red and blue blur of All Might. Electric and blur of Deku, I really like that because it's full cowl. I really, really, really enjoyed that, that looked really good. And also, the thing when they jump up, and they go, and you stay running playing, and they do, and then you see double. 
And all my- I also found it hilarious when all my did the pose. I, I started laughing. I, 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 I the whole theater burst out laughing. But he, they go double, and they both pull their fist back, and they do a Detroit smack, and I lost my mind. That was fantastic. Like, I've actually been trying to see if I can find any of it on YouTube. It's nowhere. I want to see the movie. Just, just that one scene. I just want to re see that scene one more time. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, and I honestly don't think I'm going to have a chance to see it again in theaters, because there's no, I had to go pretty far to see this movie, and there's nothing near me that's flying, and I don't have a chance to go there again. I would like to, it's a really good movie. Uh, maybe I'll do it, if I do, I'll mention it on Twitter, and I'll give myself again on there. But yeah, I really like the movie. As a movie, just as a regular movie, I'd give it an 8.9 out of 10, I think it's fantastic. As I talked about the review, I do think there are one or two things that did hurt it a little bit. Mainly the villain, the full gauntlet was kind of a plot device. And I feel like the animated scene in the beginning was a little standard. It wasn't up to the same level it was later on. And I would have liked more like theatrical music, some new soundtrack. But besides for that, I think it's a great movie. If you're a fan of anime, or if you're a My Hero Academia fan, or if you're just an animation fan, if there's a great animation in this, go see this movie. It's fantastic. Like, ten, if you're a My Hero Academia fan, 10 out of 10. This movie's great. For me, per, on a personal level, this is a 10 out of 10 movie, but I think looking back at the in general problems I had with it, it's an 8.9. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely recommend the movie. I'm going to probably be releasing on this channel a spoiler cast podcast with my friend tomorrow. Probably at some point tomorrow night. Probably pretty late. It'll probably be really late Eastern Standard Time. Like 10 Eastern Standard Time or something like that. Maybe a little bit earlier. I'm not sure around there. So look out for a spoiler cast around that time. That'll be fun. We'll be talking about My Hero Academia 2 Heroes. And yeah, follow me on Twitter. Link in the description box down below. And below, well, guys, have a great day. It's the Nerd King 101 signing out. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And below, well, guys, have a great day.